Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Amy Howard, and uh, this is what we call Maker Monday. It's an opportunity to just kind of be able to teach you how to be able to use so many of the products here that we have at a Maker Studio. If you're seeing this maybe for the first time, you don't know what a Maker Studio is. Is it a sister? It is a sister company of mine where I love crafting a beautiful life. I love making things for my home. I love being able to experiment with everything from creating my own original artwork to decor pieces to gifts, everything. So that's what a Maker Studio is all about. And I love the fact that you don't have to guess about how to use something or how to do it or we don't expect you to have to go and figure that out. We have a whole host of makers that give classes in their region of the country where they live and they love to be able to share their expertise and what they've learned and how they've used the product to be able to make things as well. So you may even have an Etsy store. You may have to where um, you like to make things and resell them or you just like making them for yourself. Uh, you're going to love a maker studio. What we're going to be doing today is a beautiful piece of original art. So I'm going to hold it up here and I'm going to show you in just a minute the stencil that you're going to get to be able to actually do the hope here. We also have another one with faith and with love. But this is a process that you're going to learn how to be able to do today. But it's also going to be something you're going to think maybe you're, you're going to learn the skill and then you're going to be able to go and do it on something else. That's what's going to make it a lot of fun. So you're, if you want to order this kit, we've also simplified. Used to we did Maker Mondays where I told you or taught you how to be able to uh, make something. But we knew that a lot of people wanted it simplified. So they were like, we want you to put everything in a kit that I can turn around and make this. Don't, don't send me to um, a craft or a hobby store and make me have to go find and hunt and peck everything. So we've simplified it. We've included everything here. Um, you'll need a few things like a rag or a bowl or maybe a spoon, that type of thing, things that you can get from your kitchen. But with this kit that you see, a lot of our makers are going to be posting it. You can go on their websites and purchase this. It's going to come with this Love, Hope, Faith stencil that you're going to be able to use with a lot of different things because you can clean these stencils and use them over and over again. You're also going to be getting um, a container of Venetian plaster from a maker studio in this adorable little burlap bag. Which we've actually stenciled these and used them for other things later. And then you're going to be getting a Rescue Restore paint and two chalk arts, a blue and a gray, a spreader, and this beautiful wood surface to be able to put your piece of artwork on. So that way you don't have to go around and try to find a surface and find all the things to be able to go along with this. We are gonna have this all included and this is gonna be shipped to you. So that way when you get it, you can just turn around and watch this video again as many times as you want and be able to um, turn around and do this piece of art for yourself. You know, the fun thing is you may wanna to get together with some friends and do this. Um, we definitely have the opinion here that it's great to get together and have community, or we call them gatherings, creative gatherings. Nothing is more fun than to get together with friends and be able to create this and help one another and encourage one another. Um, and it's an inexpensive way to be able to have original art. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna put some of my things aside, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my board like this, and I'm gonna be able to work on it. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is you're going to need your plaster. So you just want to undo it. Now, you know, the good thing is this is 10 o'clock Central Standard Time on a Monday morning. So I am doing this live, if you're catching us live. If you're not, that's okay. You can just watch it and see all the questions that everybody asks. But if there are questions, please feel free to ask them. Um, and then that way I can answer them live. Um, but also, if you don't want to ask a question, then just send us some love. <laughs> So I'm going to probably have to break down and put on my glasses. But let me see. This may be tied here. Let me just get this knot undone. And open up this adorable little burlap bag that I'm going to use for something else later. All right. So then we get a container of our plaster. So I'm just going to open this up. 
And then I want to make sure that I get a glass container. So I'm just going to show you. This is a little Ziploc bag, so you can open that up. And I want you to pour a little bit of the plaster in a container like this, a glass, a glass bowl that you can work with. So I've already put that in there. Now I'm going to take just some regular tap water. And I want you to mix it up to be about the consistency of a really thick kind of plaster sour cream. So I'm just going to mix it up like this. Add just a little bit more water. And then continue to mix this up. It's nicer to add less water in the beginning so that way you can light the consistency of it and then it's nice and thick. You do want to make sure that you stir it up really good. I'll be honest with you, we mixed this up earlier so that way it was nice and smooth. So that way you can kind of see the consistency of it as far as knocking that down. So it's a little bit thicker than sour cream. Warm or cold water? I like working with warm water because it does make it blend a little bit easier and that way I don't have the little pellets in it. So you do want to make sure you stir it. This will last you forever. So the thing is you want to just make sure um, you put it in a Tupperware container and with a, a um, lid on it where it's airtight. If you want to put a little saran wrap on top of it, you can do that. So then I'm going to take my board that's just raw like this, and I'm going to take a little bit of my plaster that I've mixed, and I'm going to put it on this spreader that I can, I want to wash this. I want to make sure I take care of this because this is a great tool. I can use it with my stencils as well with chalk art. So then I want you to just come back and I want to make sure that you get a nice, even application over everything. And then we're going to come back and we're going to texture it just a little bit. How long does it take to dry? Depending on, everybody's going to be different. Depending on how thick you put it on, but probably about an hour. And if it's real humid, like we live in Memphis, Tennessee, it's very, very humid here. Um, it'll have a tendency to take just a little bit longer. To the touch, it's going to dry pretty quickly, but as a rule, about an hour. And if you want, if you want to speed up the process, you can come back and um, speed up the process just a little bit with a hair dryer. And I would come back after you get this front done, and I would put some on the sides. You either need to put some plaster on the sides really nicely and smoothly, or you need to make sure that you paint it. You've got enough Rescue Restore paint that you'll be able to use. So now after I've kind of gotten it everywhere, I want you to come back and I'm, I'll see how I'm kind of laying it to the side like this. And I'm coming back. Now when I laid this down, I'll lightly kind of drag it just a little bit and maybe... I want some, t can you see how I'm just barely laying that down? I'm not really pressing it, I'm just, I'm laying it down and see how it'll start to pull it and give me that really pretty texture. It's very desirable. Now, what I don't want you to do, I don't want you to neglect the edges. So, I want, see how I've got this ugly little blob on the side? I want you to come back and I want you to clean that up and probably come back with just a little rag because if you are going to do the plaster on it, I want you to be able to come back and do a really nice job. As a rule, I like having texture on the front and it's smooth on the side. That's just my personal preference. But you want to make sure that you keep all of your edges nice and pretty as you're working on it. Somebody just asked, what is Venetian plaster for? Vene Venetian plaster has been used for thousands of years. It was originally for the Venetians. They had a water problem. And it was, um, it helped against mold and mildew, and they would actually put it on walls um, because it's a combination of lye and marble dust and calcium carbonate. And so those ingredients mix together, and when they're put on walls or even floors for that matter, it keeps mold and mildew away. But because the same technique of the Venetian plaster, it made its way into artwork through the centuries. And that's why we love using it like this today. All right, so I will tell you, isn't that pretty? So we're gonna allow that to dry. This is nice and wet. I'm gonna put this aside. And I already have a board that is nice and 
dry here. Now I'm going to tell you, as a rule, you're going to see how the plaster is going to dry down. It's going to be um, really matte. And a lot of that reason, because that matte that you're seeing is from the calcium carbonate. It's the chalk that's in it. And a lot of people will say, well, I'll, I'll, I've seen some, I'm um, not going to mention any names, but they'll go to very large hardware stores, very, very large ones, that's all I'm going to say, and they will get them um, in big containers. Here's the problem. They've been on the shelf for a long time, and they put chemicals and things in them to make them have a long shelf life. And so this actual uh, formula or recipe of our Venetian plaster comes from Italy. A lot of people don't know, but I worked in a bodega. It's, it means a little um, workshop. Um, I worked in a bodega in Florence, Italy, and we worked on um, finishing furniture and pieces of art. And in that process of working in Florence, Italy, um, it, was, um, it was great for me because I was able to learn the processes that these people, nobody spoke English. It was so weird. I had an interpreter, but nobody spoke English, and they were so secretive about things that they had had around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so one of the things that, that I realized, the quality of the products that I was going to be working with, I knew when I came back to the States, was gonna be imperative. And that was part of the impetus for realizing I had to create the Amy Howard at home. Because I, as a furniture finisher, I couldn't get the look of the finishes that I wanted to be able to have until I had the quality of the products available to me. So I was shipping everything from my pigments to my marble dust, to my chalks, everything over from Europe. Um, so it's also a great excuse if you've never been to Europe, I'm telling you it needs to be on a bucket list. It will change you. Tasting the tomatoes and eating the pizza in Italy, it, you're ruined forever. It's great. So um, anyway, um, I'm sorry I go off on these tangents, but I love pouring into you. I want you to learn something, um, and I, I want you to learn the why um, and what really makes us different um, here at a maker studio when we're showing you these projects and products. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back uh, with our chalks. Now, if you're not familiar with um, a maker studio chalk art. I'm going to get a larger one here. In this kit, you're going to get these smaller little containers, which is plenty for you to be able to do your project. But these larger containers, when you actually purchase them, uh, this is how big they are. Um, and they go a long, long way. But this is actually a calcium carbonate product, again, which is chalk. Um, that's the chemical term for it. The, the chalk that allows you to be able to use it on your projects, and it dries down to that beautiful chalky finish but it doesn't rub off. You have to wipe it off. So because we're working with it in combination with this plaster, it's going to be embedded into your piece of art so you don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm gonna take my spreader again. You'll just wanna wash that spreader from your plaster. Is there a question? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this out of here. It's not gonna take much. And I'm gonna spread it. Now, you're gonna notice I usually don't work with gloves because um, I'm, I'm, I'm a messy artist. I like a clean house, but I'm a messy artist because I just like getting into what I'm doing. Um, now, I'm going to tell you, this is completely dry. I'm going to mist it just a little bit. Plaster likes water. Plaster likes soap. So that way, if you work on it and it's completely dry, you can come back and mist it. But if it's a little damp, not wet, but if it's a little damp, that's okay too. All right, so these little misters, um, see how it's just a fine mist? A lot of times you've used it on a hairspray. I hope I'm not boring y'all. I know this takes a long time, but, um, but this is an art lesson. I'm teaching you how to make original art. I just have this thing about having too much fake art in our house. I just want you to be able to make things that you can be proud of. I'm just gonna show you, um, look at this. This is even a piece of art. You know, we have a, an incredible, incredible, incredible creative team here at a maker studio. And this is something that our creative team here has been working on. They've used a combination of our uh, chalk art, our stamps, and this paper. So this is original art. What, how cute would that be in a nursery, a child's room? Um, I just think it's adorable. All right. So 
I've got this to where it's misted just a little bit. It's a little, it's a little uh, damp. It allows me to be able to come back and put this chalk art on it. All right, so I'm gonna do it just kind of here and there, a little bit like this. Don't work in just one direction. But I want just to get a little bit of color in. Not everywhere. Everybody said it. Your art lessons are awesome. I love everything about this. Yay! Because you're creatives. Because I, we creatives just, we have a love for making things with our hands. And that makes life more enjoyable. But it's, there's nothing more frustrating than going into some place and trying to buy supplies and not knowing what to do with them. So that's why this is so fun. Um, and it allows you to be able to see the versatility as well. All right, so notice how all these products are made to, um, to go with one another. They're married. I'm never going to show you how to use a product that's not going to marry with it, whether it's through the finish, whether it's through the chemical composition or the way it's done. But see, this it's drying down to a flat matte finish. You can't come in and use another product besides this and expect to get the same result. I, I am just telling you, trying to save you a lot of trouble in that respect, but you have to be able to use the chalk art. It's absorbing down into the plaster. Um, it's drying to that beautiful matte finish. Now, now I'm going to come back and I'm just going to take a little bit of plaster again. You're going to have to just wash that little spreader off that you've got. And I want you to come back. They actually have just a little bit too much. So, now I want you to see, here's the result. This isn't the end result, but see how it's been layered? So I want you to think of double and triple Oreo cookies. So this color is like the Oreo center. The center, that gooey, yummy part of the Oreo cookie. So we've got the outside, we're going to lay a color, and now we're going to come back and we're going to layer on top of it again. So I'm going to take this plaster because I only want a little bit of that color showing through. Look how I'm dragging it. Can you see that? Look how I'm dragging that. I'm covering it up. I'm getting a little bit of texture. Look at that. You with me? Watch how I'm going to turn this over. And it's just, I'm just layering it and giving texture. My like, gosh, I'm loving this already. All right, now I'm going to come back and I'm going to add just a little bit more. Is everybody with me? All right. So I, I only want to see, look at this, look at this. See my final result. Look at what I've got. This is too blotchy. I'm only going to see a little bit of the blue peeking through. Everybody's is going to be different, but I do not want you to leave it at this point. Part of this whole layering process, people are going, oh my gosh, how did you do that? You know, and that's why we say enjoy the bragging rights. It's no, it is fun, um, and especially creatives, they love sharing secrets. Secrets, creative secrets. I think you're supposed to say it soft when you say it, the creative secrets. So you can have people come over to your house. You can say, come over and I'll show you how to do this. It's so easy, I promise. Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You just need somebody to show you how to do it. This is um, this is more about oval eye track. This is about composition. I'm going to come back through and set this back just a little bit more. It is going to dry lighter. Now, here's the other caveat. As you're seeing this color in here, blue, it's going to dry a lot, lot lighter. It's not going to be that dark. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit more texture. Are there any questions? Is everybody no, just, everybody's just excited sending to try me love? It and, mm -hmm, Instagram love over it. here. Is Instagram quiet? It's Monday morning. They're just saying how much they love it and how they can't wait to do this project. And Your videos are great. Thanks, guys. All right. So, in reality, I really need to be able to hit this with a hair dryer, but I don't have a hair dryer here, and I can't talk to you. So, I'm going to add just another color. Look how little I used of that. Do you see why? This goes so, so far. I'm going to put the top on that, and that's going to go into one of my little containers that I keep all of my, um, I call it my DIY pantry. And then I'm going to take a gray color right here. I'm going to load up just a little bit on my spreader again. I'm going to put the lid back on it. These will dry out if you leave the tops off. So let's say you've used it with a while, especially maybe a larger container. Put just a little bit of water in it and stir it up and it's good, good as new again. All right, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this. I'm going to spread it out. And I'm basically going to do the same thing again. Just the same thing I did as the blue before. 
all right? So I'm gonna come back just a little here and there. Now this is a really dark color, so don't go crazy, but understand when it dries down, it's gonna be much, much lighter. I'm gonna show you, look at this. See how much lighter, see how dark this is? That's what it looks like when it dries down. So you just need to know that in relationship to what you're working on, but also um, I don't want you to go crazy and I want you to be able to blend it. See how I'll just kind of drag that just a little bit. These dark colors are gonna be a lot more pronounced and I want you to be really careful with that, even though it's gonna dry down a lot lighter. All right. And it's gonna dry pretty quickly. Look how I'm laying, laying it down into the wet plaster too. Now, we talk about oval eye track a lot. And that is, let me, let me tell you what that means for just a second. So when I look at the upper left-hand corner, and you're, you're upside down, but when I look at the upper left-hand corner, I wanna be able to have something where my eye is gonna go over to the right, down to the bottom, and then back up to uh, the left again. That's called oval eye track. You don't want anything when you look at it to stand out. Like right now, this is standing out pretty strongly and this is standing out pretty strongly. I need to probably come down here without making it look like a clock that I've got 12, 3, 6, and 9. I'm just going to barely bring some color here, but I don't want it to be everywhere. A little bit of negative space is really powerful. All right, so now I'm going to come back. This is the double Oreo cookie, so we gotta have the top again, so I'm gonna come back. Now, you've got, you've got another option. You've got some uh, beautiful Rescue Restore paint here. This is in a color called Gathered. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of this on my spreader. Spreader's working hard today. Look at that color, isn't it yummy? Yes, you need to paint a piece of furniture in Gathered. It's great with gray, too. So I'm just gonna come and I'm gonna mix it in just a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit more solid. Look at that, can you see it? Tamara said, this makes my heart dance. Oh, <laughs> Tamara, we're soul sisters. Other thing is I want you to, I would like for this to dry for just a minute. I don't want you to get a mushy mess going on. I really would like for this to dry for just a minute. Um, but that way you can just start blending it. Now, do you start to see this blue? how that's real subtle under there. Share with your friends. Tell them Maker Mondays how great they are. Share them. We, we need to be sharing this with the world to where they can make it more beautiful too. Are you starting to see that? Are you starting to see? Look at that blue. So that way that tiny little peaking of blue was pretty predominant before and now we're covering it up. Suzanne's just said hello from the UK. Just want to <gasps> wish you were here. Hey, Suzanne. I love the UK. I will tell you the first time that I went to Kensington, I came back and I painted every door of my house black because those black glossy lacquer doors in Kensington are just a bomb. That's what I think of every time I, I talk to my friends from the UK. All right, so I'm just gonna continue with this and then um, I'll come back. You'll notice I'm leaving some negative space. Negative space is powerful, guys. Don't cover up everything. You need that white plaster, that original application kind of showing through. All right, so this all is gonna dry down, and let me show you, it's gonna dry down to this yumminess. Yum, yum, yumminess. All right, so see how subtle our colors are? See how I came back again, even after I put some of the Rescue Restore paint on with a little bit of plaster? Main thing is allow tack time to happen. Don't just keep blending and blending. You've gotta let it dry in between. Um, that way if it dries too much and you wanna be able to blend it, you can add a little bit of water um, with your mister. So last but definitely not least, I wanna come back and while this is pretty, what can have even more impact is having words on it. So this is the stencil that's gonna come with this kit. I'm just gonna tell you, this kit is a deal. It is a deal, guys. I don't know where you can go and spend 40 something dollars and get all these supplies to be able to make a beautiful piece of original art. This would make a great gift for somebody. If you have somebody that's creative, their birthday's coming up, send this to them. All right, so I'm gonna cut this in half. So see this line? <coughs> that is your cut line. 
and I'm just going to cut this. So I can use these stencils with rest. Sorry, my phone. They're using my phone and somebody's calling me. Somebody needs to know I'm doing Maker Monday. It's very important. All right. I love it. Thank y'all for indulging me. I, I love teaching. I just, I love teaching and letting you know that um, helping your world be a little bit more creative. All right, so I'm just going to place it. Usually when you're placing your words, don't ever place them in the center. Um, you want to usually place them probably down two-thirds, the lower, um, because I'm right-handed, lower right-hand side, um, because our eye will gravitate towards it, but also you need to look at the composition of the piece. See how this is a little heavier on this side with the, the plaster? Placing it in this lower right-hand corner or quadrant is going to be more desirable. So if you put it into fours, you're going to see this is the lower quadrant. Somebody Mighty. asked if plaster comes in the kit. Plaster comes in the kit. Yes. Everything comes in the kit for you to be able to do this. You don't have to go someplace and try to figure it all out on your own. That's what's so great about these kits. All right, so I'm going to take my little chalk art here. And I'm going to load it up just a little bit. Now, if you've not worked with these stencils before, these are mesh stencils. Look, you can see through them, but they're not cut. It's a mesh, so it's a lot like silk screening. And it allows you to be able to take this chalk art and to be, you're going to press it through. So you don't want to just set it on top of it. I'm going to press it. I'm pushing pressure under here to make sure it goes through to the other side of that. That way, I don't have to be creative. I don't have to be able to draw. Maybe stick people is all we can draw. That's not a problem. But you can spread that on here. Press it. Make sure that it gets all the way through. Stay off of faith over here. We're only focused on hope. We all need a little hope. Uh, how fun is that? Guys, aren't you glad you tuned in on Monday morning for Maker Monday? Because now you're going to be able to make your own original art. You're going to see how fun it is, how easy it is, um, and maybe even get some friends together and do this um, as a, just almost as a, a community building uh, project. Nothing is more fun than getting together with some friends and being creative. Now here's the other thing. This is going to dry down pretty light. It would be too pronounced. We want it to fall in really pretty with the whole piece of art. So this is going to dry down probably about 30%. And it will complement the palette that you've done of these beautiful pale blue and pale uh, gray colors. So anyway, that's a wrap for Maker Monday. Hopefully you will see just how... Um, how curated, we, we talk about um, a maker studio as curated creativity. We take all these products that I develop and make them into things that you can use in your home and make your own artwork or gifts, whatever, because we believe in crafting a beautiful life. Have a great week, everybody.